Hey guys, Ed Bud here. Today I'm going to try and make some sense of Nike's 2021 running shoe lineup. A lot of people are struggling to do that out there at the moment, and so am I, quite frankly. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in, it's very much appreciated. Most running shoe manufacturers have some sort of specific lines set up, different models. It's easy to understand what each shoe is supposed to be for. There's normally a daily shoe, a tempo shoe, higher pace shoe. Something for those who require a little bit more stability. A nice daily, easy shoe. Something a little more plush for the long run. Most companies just have some easy to follow rule book that you can look at and figure out what each shoe's for. Not Nike. Not this year, it's just not that simple, sadly. There's four shoes I'm gonna focus on in today's video. The Tempo Next Percent, the Infinity Run Flyknit 2, the Invincible Run, and that new Pegasus 38. Gotta be honest, I'm enjoying this one. I only got it a week ago and there's about 40 miles in there already. There is, of course, the Vomero 15, uh, one which I haven't tried, and of course that structure release. I think it's relatively self-explanatory as to what that one's for. Although that got me thinking, you know, the Infinity Run has clearly been set up with some sort of stability in mind. You got that quite pronounced rail that goes around the heel of the shoe. Surely that's a structured option, right? And they've improved the lacing and the lockdown. I mean, you got a massive heel surface area as well, so surely that's gonna provide a little more structure, a bit more stability. Certainly a big, big difference though between this shoe and the other three in today's comparison is that arch area. Loads and loads of runners have commented that the Infinity Run's just unusable for them due to the high arch. Almost digs into their foot. Of course, in comparison to that, you had the much more cushioned and heavily padded Invincible Run. It's kind of like the polar opposite, really, in terms of arch support to the Infinity Run. There's just none, really, in this shoe. I think they've tried to add the padding in there to provide a little bit more structure, but mm, it's not the finished article for me, that's for sure. The Zoom X in the heel almost like cups around the foot. I mean, there's just a huge amount of foam there around the edge. When you compare the Invincible Run and the Infinity Run up against the other two shoes, they appear to be working on an almost more is more approach. What I think Nike are doing here is that they've maxed out the amount of foam that they can put underfoot, so they're now increasing the width. I mean, they can't raise the foam any higher in the race shoes, can they? So I guess there's only one way to go increase the width as well so you've got the height and the width i mean the tempo next percent and the invincible run are amongst some of the highest shoes in terms of heel stack that i've got in my collection i mean this one of course has got a react wedge in the heel area and the invincible run's got a full zoom x mentor. both very different kettles of fish they seem to be widening the forefoot area as well in pretty much all of their shoes i mean that infinity run and the invincible run are close to 13 centimeters in terms of width in the forefoot. There's about 12.2 centimeters in terms of width in the forefoot on the Tempo Next Percent and a measly 11.5 centimeters in terms of width here in the Pegasus 38. I think if you're looking for stability in your shoe, then the Infinity Run might be the one to go for. Though if you want that additional safety zone, that buffer, the ridiculous amount of cushion, then you're going to have to go for the Invincible. I think the weird thing is though, between three of these shoes, there's almost no weight difference whatsoever. There's barely anything between the Pegasus 38, the Infinity Run and the Invincible Run. From everything that I've managed to glean from Nike's info, the Invincible Run and the Infinity Run Flying It 2 seem to be more about impact protection really, rather than propulsion I suppose. It's there for cushion rather than energy return, maybe? Air Zoom, or Zoom Air, or whatever you want to call it, or some type of it, is present in both the Tempo Next Percent and the Pegasus 38. For me, these two shoes present a much faster, or at least more varied kind of use case. I mean, the Tempo Next Percent was just a mad shoe for me. Gave me some of the fastest training time, certainly towards the end of last year. Even in those really chilly, cold temperatures, I used to strap this bizarre thing onto my foot and I could really move. I have to say though, it is one of the loudest shoes that I've got in my collection. It seemed to get louder and louder as well the more and more I used it. In fact, all of these Nike shoes are actually very, very loud. They create some very weird sounds. It's quite clacky in the Pegasus 38. There's a strange almost drum-like vibe 
about the Invincible run. I suppose you could almost call the Infinity run flying it too calm compared to the other three. I don't think you can compare any of the shoes today to the Whisper Quiet Adidas Solar Boost 3. Oh, the Puma Liberate Nitro, that's just silent almost. The Tempo Next Percent's clearly aimed at being a higher paced tempo training option high octane pace machine you could say maybe the pegasus 38 is the do it all daily option a reliable tool i'm certainly finding it that doesn't feel quite so clown like i suppose but pull tabs and lacing variations aside what are the main differences between these shoes there seems to be very little differentiation between nike's running shoe lineup right now well aside from price i suppose so 105 earth credits for the newly released Nike Air Zoom Pegasus 38. Next up up is 140 earth credits for the Nike React Infinity Run Flyknit 2. We keep on going up. 160 earth credits for the Nike Zoom X Invincible Run Flyknit. And right up to 170 pounds for the Nike Air Zoom Tempo Next Percent. The lightest of all four shoes today. So the most cash for the lightest of the bunch. I think the weight difference is about 40 grams as well, which is quite a lot when you think about it. It's probably got the most race feel of all four shoes today, but is that 65 pounds difference really worth it? I mean, you could pick up the PEG 38 for 65 less than this. Just think about that for a minute. We haven't even mentioned that Nike React Miler 2 yet either. Similarly priced to the Pegasus 38, but another React shoe. Do we really need it? The YouTube channel Athletic Interest reckons that Nike make about $5 on every pair of $100 running shoes that they sell. I mean, when you take into account transport, insurance, and also customs and stuff, it does tend to reduce down that amount quite a lot. But $5, that's it. Let's not forget, Nike are traditionally a running shoe brand, which makes it even more bizarre that it's very difficult to understand which running shoes for what these days adidas have always sold more apparel than nike so it's been a better balance for them they don't rely quite so much on shoes what i think that nike are doing here guys is they're hedging their bets making many shoes for many different runners just kind of throwing mud at the wall almost i mean you got the next percent and stuff haven't you you know what that's for they're just trying to make lots of shoes aren't really too specific i suppose is it to try and help in terms of injury prevention Nah. Is it because they're worried about aesthetics to try and sell running shoes? No, I don't think that's what it is. Historic appeal and heritage, maybe? Well, possibly with the Pegasus 38. Use of Nike Air and the Pegasus lineup are synonymous with running, aren't they? Which, of course, Nike's famous for. I think it's hard for them to try and launch new models. People are suspicious of them straight away. Plus, you've also got to notice the use of the word run in the Invincible Run Flyknit and also that React Infinity Run Flyknit too. Clever marketing. But for once, I think that Nike are actually on the run a little bit from some of those other competitors. Some of the other brands are catching them up a little. I think a little more thought needs to go into some of this. It does feel like they've rushed out some of these shoes in 2020 and certainly in 2021. There's no real thought to how people are gonna see them. How are they gonna feel about them? How do they perceive them, I suppose? I think when shops do reopen and people can sort of wander in and look at them, well, that'll be a different story. What are your thoughts on all of this, guys? Have you managed to figure out what some of these are for? Aside from the tempo next percent, I suppose. Well, even then, a lot of people were a bit bemused by that one. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments. A quick musical interlude for you to check out. Heading back to 2007, a retrospective album of the V Recordings label. This one's put together by DJ Crust and Jumpin' Jack Frost. Certainly is worth checking out. 22 of the best tracks from V Recordings from the 1990s. It kicks off with Warhead, the Stepper Mix, originally by DJ Crust. Beautiful, crusty, precise drums. Lots of space in those drums as well for the bass line. There's a fantastic track on here from Dillinger as well, also called Soul Control. The double bass sampling It's a Jazz Thing from Ronnie Size is always going to be one of those classic drum and bass tracks from that period. And I used to really love everything by DJ Die. There's a great one on here called Something Special. Just really simple tunes. You can imagine these guys knocking out these tracks, you know, on a 
Wednesday morning or something in Bristol. Amazing to think that so many great drum and bass tracks came from there. Fantastic. Local legends. Local legends. Ronnie Size and Crust. Do check this one out. V Recordings Retrospective Volume 1. Okay, friends. It's time for me to depart once again. But I'll be back soon. Don't you worry. It does help us out here at the channel if you hit that subscribe button. But also hit that bell for notifications of when we launch those new videos. And you can help the channel out too with that YouTube algorithm by giving this video a thumbs up like and sharing it with your running buddies. My name's Ed Bud, and I'll be seeing you.